Before we call the meeting to order, I'd like to read the quotation by Madam Clerk Sue Richards today. Quotation for the week. Leaders are the ones who keep faith with the past, keep step with the present, and keep the promise to posterity. Thank you, Welcome. City Clerk. Also tonight, we have a record that has been set by this <clears throat> Common Council, one which you should be proud of because it illustrates our commitment to responsive government, and that is that for the first time, we've hit over 100 documents that means that over a hundred items of business will be conducted by committees for the council to come back. 111 to be precise. That is a record. It's never been done before. That illustrates your responsiveness to the people of Sheboygan. Thank you. I'll call the 15th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Bauman? Here. Deberg? Here. Eberg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Graf? Here. Kittleson? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Montemayor, Here. Radke, Here. Sigali, Stefan, Susha, Here. Van Akron, Here. and Vanderweel. 16 present. Quorum is present. Approval of the minutes. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the minutes of the previous Common Council meeting be approved as entered on the record. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? There will be a non. All those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes stand approved. Pledge of Allegiance, I'd ask all of the staff to please lead us. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, United States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you, Alderman Stephan. <clears throat> Confirmation of mayor's appointments. Uh, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this first uh, packet was dated October 17th. I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. Halperin Water Feature Advisory Committee, Alderman Jeff Radke, term expiring 4 uh, Joshua Decker, Dustin Havens, Bernard Markovich, Jay Morris, Brian Plautz, and William Wood, terms expiring 4-30-06, signed by the mayor. Ask for a motion to approve, confirm. So, Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Appointment stand confirmed. And the last is Dustin Havens to be considered for appointment to the Housing Rehabilitation Committee to fill the unexpired term of Susan Gadzinski, whose term expires 4-30-06, signed by the mayor. I'd ask for a motion to confirm also. Second. Second. All those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? Confirmation stands approved. Thank you. Public forum, uh, Madam Clerk. <clears throat> Excuse me. First on the list is Don Cook, is it? If you could step up to the mic. And I need your home address, please. 923 Dillingham. 923 Dillingham. Dillingham? Yes. And you will have five minutes. I would like to thank Mayor Perez and the members of the council for this opportunity to speak. I would like to take this time to express my concerns over future city borrowing. Why is it so easy to borrow money to add features to our parks, but so very difficult to borrow money for a needed police station? The capital improvement five-year budget shows the city borrowing over $1 million to spend on park improvements. That is in addition to spending $700,000 in grants over the next two years on park improvements. We have all heard about the cost of borrowing the needed funds to build a police station. Has there been a discussion on the cost of borrowing money for these new park features? There have also been discussions on the cost of operating and maintaining the new police station. What about the added cost of maintaining and operating these new park features? In the future, are these new features going to be sitting in disrepair because the city does not have the money in the budget to maintain them? The fountain by the library is a reminder that this could happen. The city has over 30 great parks. The focus should be on the upkeep of the features we already have in these parks. The city may want additional features in our parks, but more importantly, we need a new police station built. If the budget is indeed so tight, now is not the time to borrow money for park improvements. Thank you. Thank you, John. 
Next on the list is Dimple Adams. Dimple, if you could step up to the mic and give me your home address, please. Thank you. 1424 Virginia Avenue. And you will have five minutes, Dimple. Thank you. Um, also, I would like to thank um, Mayor Perez and uh, City Clerk and City Attorney and the council members for the privilege of being able to speak tonight. I too am here to talk about the police department and the upcoming budget. Um, I'm just in a state of shock all over again. Every time I think we've got it solved, uh, you know, I kind of sit back and go home and then all of a sudden it just jolts me that, uh, you know, I, I don't really think that this police station is ever going to get built. I really believe that. And you can say, oh, Dimple, why would you say that? Well, you know, prove it to me. Prove it to me. You know, we have talked about this, I talked about this for years. And here we are, you know, we have done 49, 50, 51, 52, three site studies now on this police station. And we have wound up being at where the police station is already. So, okay, so for all the money that we spent on site studies, I guess we could have saved that. And then there was the urgency after we had decided not to build it at Sheridan Park. Oh, we've got to get all these sites in a big hurry and have all these meetings and, and uh, get all these site studies done. They paid $25,000 to Zimmerman to study these four or five sites, which we did. And here we are. We're at the City Hall again. Okay, then we think, okay, now we've got the site. Everybody has finally agreed on the site. Not everyone is happy with it, but we've got a site. Now we can't build it because we don't have the money. But we can start a new <clears throat> tourism department and spend two hundred and something thousand dollars on that. And you say, oh, but wait a minute. That was two hundred and something thousand dollars that we were already spending. But we weren't spending that for salary. Over a hundred and something thousand dollars of that two hundred and something thousand dollars for tourism is gonna go for salaries. It wasn't going for salaries before. <clears throat> but meanwhile, we can cut budgets, we can cut people, we can't give the police department the, the replacements that they need. We voted on giving them tasers. Now we're gonna take that away. We're gonna take away other things from the police budget. And um, I just don't get it. It's like, well, we can do this. We can, we can spend $6,000 to protect our logo, which thank God we didn't do that. But that was peanuts but we can cut $16,000 out of the budget and take away the tasers. People, I don't get it. Please make me understand. Please make the other citizens understand why protection and safety is not the main priority of this council and this administration. And you say, well, Dimple, you got it all wrong. It really is a priority. Well, I don't get it. I heard Mr. Graff say, when we were approving the fire department that night, that it's really, you know, makes good sense to go ahead and build it this year because prices are gonna go up. I heard our mayor, when he was president of the school board, say to us, it's really important that we get those school things done to the tune of $33 million. And you say, but that's a different bill. Not on my bill, it all comes in on the same bill. My school taxes, and my property taxes come in on the same bill. So it's the same bill for me. And I don't understand why we need to put off to 2007, or maybe 2008, or maybe 2020 to build a police station. Please make it clear to me. Thank you. Thank you, Dimple. Next on the list is Ben Coonert. Ben, if you could give me your home address, please. Uh, 1427 North 10th Street. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you for 
giving me some time to address you, and I can tell it's budget time again because everybody says we got to cut this, we got to cut that. And you know, one of the first things that ever has heard is we got to cut transit. You know, not that many people use transit, but you know what? Everybody could. Be honest, it's a very good service. Granted, it could be better, but you know, with the budget restraints and stuff, unless the city is willing to take a risk and put some money into it so we can increase the routes, change directions, and, and in fact, according to the last transit meeting I was in, they were looking at changing a lot of these routes. Uh, you know, you get a lot of people sitting there saying that the people that ride the bus are, how should I put it, it's put in different terms according to some radio stations, but basically we're second class citizens. But be honest with you, for a lot of those people that ride the bus, a lot of them are low wage workers. And I just wonder, the houses their bosses live in, I wonder if they could afford the nice houses they have if these workers didn't work so cheap. You know, these workers need to get to their jobs. And you know what, if you really realize it, you know, on a minimum wage job, you don't have a lot of money for transportation, which means you use the bus. You don't use a $4 taxi when you're making $6 an hour, and a lot of times you're working a four-hour shift. You don't use things like a car when you're basically taking home, you know, three or $400 every two weeks when two or 300 of that is at least for rent. And especially it gets harder if you have a child and have daycare. You know, people don't realize how this bus and this transit system is needed by these people. Some of these people, you know, they have better paying jobs, but I don't know if I'd want a blind person driving down the street. I don't know if I'd want a person that, that's, uh, you know, restricted to a wheelchair and, and has cerebral palsy or whatnot and can't control their, their movements to be driving down the street. These people need to get to work. These people need to have a life. You know, there was some suggestions that, well, why don't we just run transit like the times are busy? Well, tell you what, how often do you make three or four trips during the course of a day? Do you work just nine to five? Do you think everybody works from nine to five? If there is, it'd be hard to get to the store because, you know, if everybody works from nine to five, there wouldn't be anybody at the store after five o'clock when you get off. You know, it's kind of, easy to sit there and attack transit. You know, it's one of the lowest things on, on the budget. And actually, if you look at the budget, you see a lot of things. One thing is $7 million, actually close to $8 million for healthcare costs for our, our workers. I'm not saying we should cut it, but I'm just saying there's maybe a better way. The state AFL-CIO has a plan that would cut, and from what I understand from from companies that have implemented this plan, it's got their health care costs by up to 33 to a half of what it was, or 33% to up to half. I can't understand how we can spend 16% of that $8 million, which actually comes out to $1.2 million, to a company to administer this program, or these programs. It seems kind of odd when the, the U.S. government, which is supposed to be the most inefficient, you know, actually, you know, you think government is so inefficient, can run Medicare and Medicaid, which basically is the same thing, paying health care costs, at about 3 to 5 percent. So you just figure, if we did it ourselves, you know, you could hire 24 people and still be less than $1.2 million per, uh, for this cost. You know, you go through the list. We're sitting there struggling, thinking, should we borrow money for a police station? And yes, we should, because that is an you know, accident waiting to happen. But you know what? If we did that building right, maybe we could lower our costs, eliminate a lot of these different office buildings. We're sitting there renting office space for $40,000 or more per year. You're going, why in, why in the world aren't we planning this building to not only expand the police to pay, uh, station, but to eliminate a lot of these offices and what now we have around. And you know what, we probably could cut a little bit of cost because instead of cleaning you know, half a dozen buildings, we'd be cleaning one. Granted, it'd be a little bit bigger, but it'd be just one. Uh, that's all I have to say, thanks. Thank you, Ben. And last on the list is John Berner. 
John, if you could go up to the mic and give me your home address, please. <clears throat> Nineteen nineteen Broadway. And you will have five minutes. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Common Council members. I this gentleman had a good point. We do need some kind of a transit system. But I think our transit system today is a little outdated for the needs for the city. It's kind of back in the fifties when everybody was riding buses and and I believe with all the people with all the degrees can come up with something better than having people stand on a corner and waiting for a bus. I really do. And the other persons with the police station, they're right on too. When you're going to buy a house, the first thing you do is go to the bank, ask them how much you can borrow, they tell you. Then you go see uh, somebody and buy some land. Then you see an architect, show them how much you can spend, and you build around it. And the city has done this once. There was a common council. They picked a site that was basically free. And now we have a site that it's going to have to take a lot of renovations to build a police station, which is going to cost more money, which the city doesn't even know if they can borrow that much. They don't even know if they can really put it there. I don't know, it's just kind of confusing that, uh, you know, there once was a common council that picked a site, and I'm not saying they were right or wrong. But they went with the needs of the city, the needs of the police station, and financially what the city could afford on that site and what the site would cost. And I always hear this stuff about Sheboygan as a tourist town. And I sit at home and I say, to see what? The fountain, they, that's a big tourist attraction? I don't think so. Lake Michigan, you can walk to Lake Michigan. Say you're staying a week, you walk Lake Michigan, it takes you how long? If you get past the smell on the north side, you come back to the south side. If you go too far south, you can't even walk because if it gets too late, it's kind of a bad district to walk. So where's all this tourism? There was somebody that stopped at Kmart and asked a friend of mine that worked there that was staying here in Sheboygan I want to know where all the little shops were. He saw the lake, but he's looking for these little shops, like I, I guess in Door County. I've never been in Door County. Evidently, I have a bunch of little shops you go to. And they make a full or two days going to different shops. And you kind of compare Sheboygan with Kohler. Kohler built that town. Mr. Kohler planned that, all the shops there, and everything tourists need. You can walk the streets at night, any time at night. How many of these streets can you walk at night? They have ample police. Their police have everything. Same way with Elkhart Lake. It's hard to compare Sheboygan with smaller communities when you have things that uh, people kind of don't see. They don't want to see it. Drugs are a big problem in the city, and the police are doing a wonderful job with what they have. Uh, but there are some people I've heard that say, well, the police are doing a good job, and as long as they're doing a good job, maybe we can hang on before they get a little bigger. Sooner or later, you're going to have people really getting hurt here. You have gangs here. I mean, until you have so many people getting killed over these drugs, gang members fighting, and they already do fight, how long are you going to wait for this? That's all I have to say. Good evening. Thank you. Thanks, John. That's it. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Clerk.
Next we have a, a proclamation for the Sheboygan Police Department's NAD program for being a finalist for the Herman Goldstein Award at the International Problem or Oriented Policing Conference. Now notice I said international, that's pretty big stuff. This time I'd ask Dr. Brandon Coy, Lieutenant Jeff Johnson, and Officer Todd Creevy to please step up. Missing one. Yeah. You take it. Before I make the presentation, I'd like to note also that it's important that we thank Chief Kirk and his department for the wonderful job that they're that they're doing. This type of accomplishment would not happen with a with a perfect, almost perfect police department and the leadership of Chief Kirk. Chief Kirk and I and his deputy chiefs meet regularly and we talk about a lot of the, the problems that we have in our community and we're hoping that we can come together and address a lot of these issues. And a, one of those issues I'll address during the mayor's report. Also, I think important players, very important players are the NAD neighbors, our citizens who have the heart, the courage to stand up and fight crime. I thank you. I am one to really detest drug trafficking, illegal drug trafficking, and illegal uh, drug users. So thank you for the good work that you do, and I hope that we will always have your kind of volunteers in our community. <laughs> On the occasion of being runner-up for the International Herman Goldstein Award for Excellence in Problem-Orienting Policing Efforts, I urge all citizens to recognize and thank Officer Todd Preby and Lieutenant Jeff Johnston of the Sheboygan Police Department, Dr. Brandon Coy from Lakeland College, and all of the citizens volunteers who have made this program a huge success in our community. Dr. Coy, thank you very much. Say a few words, please. Would you like to say a few words? The, the, when we were at the uh, conference, there was a number of the volunteers that came and actually made the trip, which I'm sure you're all well aware of, and the credit really belongs to them. Um, Herman Goldstein, who the award was named after, had uh, commented to both Todd and I uh, of what just a fantastic um, representation of the overall problem-oriented policing and community-oriented policing philosophies that the Sheboygan community displayed. Um, so we really should all be proud as community members of Sheboygan that uh, the volunteers have come through and really made an enormous difference. That was gonna be tough to match. I do know what he says, but I wanna emphasize the, uh, the volunteers. Um, they spend an awful lot of their own personal time uh, some of their own money, and they are diehards, and they're always there for me, and they're there for the neighbors, and when the neighbors ask for us, we respond, and it's because of them and those red shirts back there, and I'm awfully proud of them, and I don't think they get enough recognition that this is, this is for you guys, too. Thank you, gentlemen. Next on the agenda, we have mayor's comments. I'd like to just make some quick comments on the citizen's budget process. An update, we've completed, as you know, we've completed the 16 listening sessions and we actually did nine more additional informal, what I call informal listening sessions totaling 25 listening sessions. When I mentioned this to other mayors that I have been meeting throughout, uh, throughout the seven months that I've been mayor, one of their first reactions is, why are you doing that? Too much, nobody does that. Well, we're doing it because we care about the community. We care about the input the community has to give us, and that is very important to me. That was the first phase, is to go out into the community to different locations, different times of the day, and gather the input from the, uh, from the citizens. Phase two will be to put together a survey using those comments that were made during those listening sessions. And that, 
survey is in draft form right now. It's being reviewed by uh, Dr. Jack Westfall, myself, Susan Hart, and some other volunteers that have, that have volunteered to help. When we finalize the survey, the survey will go out to the community, hopefully uh, using the Sheboygan Press, uh, our website, our city clerk's office, the mayor's office, and perhaps even the library. We'll have different locations where the people can have access to the survey. I encourage the public and I encourage all department heads to encourage their employees to participate. It's very important that we get your feedback. For the, for the most part, a lot of times people find out about something and say, why, didn't I, why wasn't I advised? Why didn't I know about this? Well, we're hoping that people will know that this is coming, that the survey is coming. It'll, it'll go to people's homes. It'll be at City Hall and, and, as I said, perhaps at the library. So it's very important that people take time to, to respond to that. The next item that I'd like to talk about is just make a few brief comments on the budget. As you know, we have some important dates coming up. November 21st is our budget hearing. November 21st is our budget hearing, and I am inviting the public to attend. I ask that if you know anyone that would like to attend, to please attend. They can speak or not, but if they would like to attend, we welcome them. I will be setting a parameter of three minutes per person if we get a lot of people. If we don't, then we'll make the adjustment there, and anyone wishing to speak will do so once. I would hope that we'd have some people here addressing the council on our budget. November 28th is the actual budget approval. The same rules will apply, and the public may also speak during that, that day. So again, November 21st, budget hearing. November 28th is a budget approval. From the amounts requested by all the departments, as it stands now, as recommended by my office, we have cut about $2 million from the budget. That's from what was there last year and the amounts re recommended, uh, requested by departments. We've cut almost $2 million. Now I know that uh, some aldermen are looking to, to perhaps make recommendations for other cuts. That's your prerogative. You're, you're entitled to do that as well within your jurisdiction. And if that's what you choose to do, by all means. Expect a lot of lobbying from this point on. There's going to be a lot of lobbying from people who have a, an interest in the budget, people who will be affected by the budget. <laughs> that happens. Perfectly all right, just, but just expect it. Three comments on the tax levy for the 206 budget. The tax levy for last year was 19675661 The levy for this year as it stands now is 20 million six oh five five twenty one. The budget is increasing by only seven hundred uh, seven hundred and eighty three thousand two hundred and fifty two or four percent. Now, when we think about the spiraling increase in rates and, and everything that we do, everything that we have and we represent, 4% or a little over half a million dollars increase in the levy uh, in the budget, it's not a lot. That, that, to me, is pretty responsible. That's provided that the council wants to deal with that increase in the levy when the time comes. The council has a choice not to increase the levy or <coughs> increase it. In the general fund budget, this year's budget stands at 33718917 the majority of the general fund increase is going to police and fire departments. And we have charts that we can show you. We have numbers that we can show you. It's been mentioned perhaps here and there that we don't support police and fire protection. Yes, we do. History will attest to the fact, to the truth of that statement. We support police and fire protection. That is critically important to our community. But we cannot, we cannot ignore the other major departments either. I've made a statement to all my department heads that I can't pick favorites. There's certain priorities that the committee has, uh, the community has, and we'll look at those priorities. But as it stands now, the majority of the increase in our general fund will go to the police and fire, and that's the way it's been structured. And that amount is close to half a million dollars, or 2.7% increase for police uh, and fire protection. Thank you. Moving along, we have three hearings today. Oh, I'm sorry, we've got one more. Mapping and Crime Analysis Program. This one you really want to hear about. About two and a half months ago, I started talking to, to a, a Deputy Chief Weiss, uh, asking to perhaps if we could work together, put a matrix together where we could actually identify all the criminal activity that's going on in Sheboygan. There's certain specific criminal activity that's going on that comes into our police department that perhaps is not logged or documented for whatever reason. And I was hoping that we could show at any point in time that we could show a pattern or a trend 
or an image of what our criminal activity looks like at different times throughout our community. But we're unable to do that. As it stands now, the police department just uh, records major crimes like ar uh, arson, uh, robbery, uh, rape, and, and crimes of that nature. So I wanted to make sure that we look at all the activity that's going on. There's a lot of activity, for example, car break-ins. You call for a car break-in, it has a lower priority because of the, the, the bigger crime that's going on in our community. So what I wanted to do is put together this matrix. What I didn't know is there's already a program for it. So we said we'll shelve that, that idea and start looking at what, what kind of program we can get. And it's, it's a mapping and, um, and crime analysis program that we'll be able to interface with our GIS program that we have in our engineering office. Uh, GIS stands uh, for Geographic Information Systems. This program is already in place. The city owns it. We have it. All we need to do is interface a program that we're going to be bringing together for the mapping and crime analysis. It's going to be a very useful tool. I think Chief Kirk has agreed with me. It'll be a very useful, useful tool for our police department and our, our, our quest, our major effort to tackle crime in our community. Now we will move on to hearings. We have three hearings. Number one, amend the zoning map for the vacant lot on North 37th Street and Erie Avenue from Class UR Urban Residential to Class SC Suburban Commercial. Number two, establish a zoning for a recently annexed city-owned property located on the south side of Indiana Avenue, 500 feet east of Taylor Dr uh, Drive, Lot 1. And number three, establish a zoning for recently annexed property located on the south side of Indiana, 500 feet east of Taylor Drive, Lot 2. Is there anyone wishing to be heard on any of those hearings? Yes, sir. Please step up. What? What's that? Yes. Which? 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 Uh, which one would you like to speak uh, on? That's item three relating to uh, the uh, establishment of the zoning on the okay. property lot two. Okay. Uh, Steve Lepowski with Reuter Ware Law Firm representing the applicant General Parts. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of uh, comments to share. We've uh, taken the time. I've worked with City Attorney McLean and others through the city both through the annexation process as well as the zoning process for this property. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions that the council might have and just wanted to make, uh, make you aware of uh, my being here tonight and uh, availability again to answer those questions. Steve, could you give me your last name, please? Uh, Lepowski, that's L-I-P as in Paul, O-W-S-K-I. Thank you. Welcome. Questions, sir? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to be heard? Yes, ma'am. Which one? Good evening on number one. Number one. Um, my name is Sue Breitbach Fenn, and I am the one that is interested in purchasing that lot. Um, it is in a commercial corridor now, that lot on 37th and Erie. It's behind the mall where Coles is, Struckel Photography, and Dr. Shows. And I uh, plan on running my insurance business for at least, God willing, the next 20 years in that location. So I too am here this evening just to represent myself and um, the interest of having that lot rezoned. And it would be a nine to five office operation and the designs are such that it would be representing the residential feel of that area, but it already is in a commercial corridor. So I am just um, here to represent that and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council? Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the hearings be closed. There's a motion. Second. A second. Any discussion on that? Not all those in favor, state aye. 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 Motion carries. We need to pull forward. Yes. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to pull forward agenda item 1431. It, uh, it applies to what we were just to the hearings. Okay. Agenda item number 1431, I move to accept and file the report of officer and pass the ordinance. There's a motion and a second. Does that uh, RO pertains to hearing number three? It's a motion and a second under discussion. <clears throat> there being none, would you please call the roll? Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Sagali, Stefan, Susha, 
Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. and Bauman. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Consent agenda, Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would move that uh, documents 15-1 through 15-34, uh, that all a, um, ROs be accepted and filed, all RCs be accepted and adopted. We pass the resolutions and the general ordinances. There's a motion. Is there a second? second. Motion and a second. Alderman Susha, under discussion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have a question about documents 15-3 and 15-4. They're basically reports from building inspection and a report from the chief of police. And um, I'm just wondering if this is uh, the, the usual protocol that they just go to the consent agenda without going to committee, or is there a way to send them to public protection and safety before they get put on the consent agenda? That's a good question. Let me sure. <clears throat> um, the procedure for um, monthly reports has always been to put them on the consent agenda, but we certainly can if you would request one of them when it comes in. We would just refer it on to whatever committee you would like if you want that to happen. There's nothing saying it can't. So typically all human resources, all the different reports for monthly reports just get submitted to me and then get put on the consent agenda because it's a matter of record. But if you would like to have something, just let me know. And we can refer it on to you and then bring it back. Okay, then I would like to move to uh, refer 15, 3, and 4. To public protection. Public safe. protection. <clears throat> There's a motion and a second to refer 15.3 and 15.4 to public protection and safety. And there's a second under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. aye. Two opposed. Mm -hmm. Motion carries. We have a motion and a second then to approve. 15.1 to 1534 with the exception of those two items. Any discussion further on that? There being none, please call the roll. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. And Deberg. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 1535 to be referred to Building Use Committee instead of Committee of the Whole, Alderman Berg. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to file this uh, directly from the floor. Uh, reason uh, is moved to file. Second. There's, I'm sorry, there's a motion and a second to file under discussion? Uh, under Berg. discussion. Uh, this is essentially a communication that asks that the council use common sense. If I felt this body could legislate common sense, believe me, if we could legislate common sense and enforce it, we don't belong in Sheboygan. We belong in Madison or Washington. Uh, I doubt that we can. Tonight I'm going to join Richard Gephardt, who last Monday said that he was a pessimist. I doubt that we can uh, enforce common sense upon ourselves or anybody else. That's why I'm moving to file. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Any other Alderman? There's a motion and a second on the floor. You, need a roll. you don't need a roll call. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Two no. Who did the other no? Who did the other no on this side? Bonnie? Okay, thank you. Motion carries. Report of officers 1536 and 1537. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Art. Yeah, the library board uh, would move to accept and file documents 1536 and 1537. There's a motion and a second under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 1538, 1539 lies over to November 28th meeting. 1540 to 1552 to be referred. <clears throat> Resolutions introduced three, 1553 by Alderman Bauman consenting to the assignment of the Dockside Lounge <coughs> Ground Lease at 739 Riverfront Drive, Alderman Bauman. I thank you, Your Honor. I'd move for suspension of the rules first, please. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Please proceed. I thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'd move then that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second to put the uh, Resolution 1553 on its passage. Alderman Susha. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a question. Um, I just want to make sure that that property, by doing this, uh, the previous occupant is up to date with their personal property taxes and their property taxes. I'm sorry, what was the question, Alderman Susha? Um, just wanted to confirm that uh, this parcel of land is up to date with their personal property taxes and also their property taxes before we enter into a new lease. My understanding is that it was, but Paulette, do you have any? Okay. Yes, uh, Attorney McLean? Uh, Alderman Sushi, I, I don't have specific knowledge as, as to whether it is or not, but I do know that that transaction closed last week. Uh, the assignment from uh, Hickey Investments to Malt Scoop LLC, and that would be taken care of in the closing. Uh, they, they went ahead and closed even though they had not requested the consent from the city to the assignment of the lease, which is required under the lease. They're, they're now requesting the assignment. If you recall, uh, I think it was either the last meeting or the one before that, uh, they had requested an extension of 30 year time frame for that lease. Uh, and that was the new owners were interested in buying it if the lease was longer. The council approved that, but they hadn't requested the consent. Uh, I guess they assumed that, uh, so all they're doing now is they've closed and they're requesting the consent from the city, which is, uh, as I say, required under the lease that the city consent to the assignment. Uh, I do know this is, uh, they were in redevelopment authority, the Viglietti family. Um, they're operating it now. Um, they've got a good track record in the city and so. Alderman Susha, if, if you'd like to have anyone who has their ground lease renewed, you may want to make that request to uh, Mr. Chairman Alderman Bauman when they deal with it in public works or with other ground leases. You wish to speak? Alderman Susha? Yes, thank you. Um, I just want to make sure that the old debt doesn't fall on the new owner. So if someone could just get back to me later this week to confirm that the previous owner actually did pay the, the taxes that were in arrears, I would appreciate it. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I'm sorry, oh, Attorney McLean? Uh, I guess I would say, I know the Malt Scoop LLC was represented by a local large law firm and uh, if all that wasn't taken care of, I'd be very surprised. Thank you, Attorney <clears throat> McLean. Okay, anything else? Not please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Groff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. And E. Berg? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1554 by Alderman Groff, accepting her grant from the Clickenoy Family Foundation in the amount of $6,000 to be used by the city clerk's office for the preservation of the early city of Sheboygan Minutes books, Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, that resolution along with 1555, which is a resolution authorizing the filing of an application with the United States Department of Transportation and authorizing the executing of, of the contract pertaining to grants for calendar year 2006, I would move that both those resolutions be put upon their passage. There's a motion and a second to put resolutions 1554 and 1555 upon their passage under discussion. There be a none, please call the roll. Davis? Aye. Graff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. And Serta? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1556 by Alderman Ratke authorizing the city attorney and board of examiners for building contractors to engage the services of special outside counsel for the common counsel in the matter of the hearing on the issue of suspension revocation of contractors license number 621. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to move for suspension of the rules. Second. There's a motion and a second to suspend the rules. I didn't oh, excuse move. me, we need to take a vote on that. Any discussion on that? All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And then move that the resolution be put upon its passage. 
There's, there's a motion. Is there a second? second. Put resolution 5056 upon its passage under discussion. There being on, please call the roll. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Serta and Davis. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1557 to 1560 lies over. 1561, 62 lies over to November 28th. 1563 to 1569 to be referred. Report of committees six, 1570 by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operator license number 1298 based on failure to cooperate with the committee in failure to reveal all violations. Alderman Manning. Thank you, Your Honor. I move on behalf of the committee uh, to accept and adopt committee report. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Is a party here? Uh, is Terry McDaniel here, please? Terry McDaniel. Your Honor, she is not here. Thank you, Alderman Manning. Any discussion? Not, please call the roll. Kittleson? Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. And Graf? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1571, 1575 lies over to November 28th. Report of committees 7. Uh, 1576 to 1586 lies over also to November 28th. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to pull 15-81 uh, and ask for suspension of rules. 1581. There's a motion and a second to pull. Thank you. I would like to um, discuss um, the police department um, budget and all of the decreasing. And when it comes to the taser guns, from what I understand, that we had originally approved the tasers, and now the finance we committee is here. recommending. Yes, sir. We didn't vote on the suspension. I don't think we voted on the suspension, did we? But, Your Honor, um, those are documents that we discuss at a public hearing on the 21st. And then they get moved to um, the 28th when we, we vote on it. Those two meetings are where we, we bring up discussions and, um, and changes to those two documents. That's the normal procedure that we follow. That's the explanation. Do you still want to take a vote on suspension elements legally or not? Proper way would be to wait till the 28th. Okay. If I may please ask, why wasn't this told? before why I mean I wasn't aware of the fact that we have to have certain meetings that we can first bring these things up on. But it was on your agenda to lie over until the, the 28th. Right. Okay. And that was, if you will recall, maybe about two months ago or when we gave out a schedule of how the budget all works, that was when it came out that way. So. I'd still like to suspend the rules and bring it forward. There's a motion and there was a second, I believe, to suspend the rules. We need two-thirds vote. Three-quarters vote, I'm sorry. That would be how many people here. So take the roll, okay, please. On. This would be to suspend. Okay. Uh, Manny? No. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Radke? No. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? No. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? No. Kittleson? Aye. Nine to seven. Enough. Three quarters. Sixteen you need. Uh, You need 12. You need 12. We need three quarters, correct? We need 12. We need 12 people. What's the count? Uh, nine ayes, seven noes. Motion fails. Report of committees eight. 
1587 by committee of the whole recommended accepting and adopting document approving the revised capital improvements program recommended by the capital improvements commission for the program period 206 through 210 and adopting the 206 program for the implementation to and to amend the program to fund the police facility at $7 million in 207 and City Hall remodeling at $3 million in 207 and pass the resolution. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, for the Committee of the Whole document, I would move that, uh, that um, RC be accepted and adopted and then also the 1588, which is for the, from the Finance Committee, that is the same document and that um, also that I would move that um, they would be combined as, as one document and getting the approval of the council to um, accept and adopt that. There's a motion and a second. Is there a second? Second. Second. Under discussion, Alderman Deberg. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Pushing this off now again to 207, that's all we've had ever since Sheridan Park. We've had nothing but delays. Any, any which way to find a way to delay this thing. Now they say it's money, but all of a sudden there's a lot of money for parks and for statues and everything else but what do they do take away from the police and everybody here they say oh that's our top priority the police department i don't see it if we keep on delaying this 207 you're going to come up with an excuse 208 is going to be an excuse like dimple said in the public forum show me that you're going to do something and do it now alderman serta Thank you, Your Honor. I have a statement to make and then I'm going to be making a motion. I had a constituent call me and he wanted me to share um, just some figures um, talking about delaying um, the spending and to take into consideration the inflation rate. And he gave me the example that he wanted me to use tonight, that he had purchased um, some waffle board at um, one of the local supply stores here prior to Katrina hitting. And that waffle board was $6.99. And after Katrina had hit, that increased to $13.99. And he's saying, putting it off is just going to increase how much money we're going to be spending. So, and also listening to Mr. Sabinash and giving an, an explanation about using the first schedule versus the second schedule. He had said in the first schedule, we would be building somewhere around December. The second schedule would be more advantageous because we would be building in January and February. And as you all know, I'd question that. There doesn't seem to be a real big difference in um, in our weather in Wisconsin. Um, and any time, and I can understand him being the architect that he would like to have more time, but again, we're dealing with the citizens' pockets books. And I think by using a conservative schedule, the first one will allot for some of those things that could come up that might be problematic and that could extend <coughs> into that same time. So I'll be voting no um, to delay spending. But secondly, I'm gonna be making a motion um, to suspend the borrowing amount of 125 thousand um, dollars allotted for park improvements for 2006. Second. Alderman Serter, could you repeat that? Um, I made a motion to suspend $125,000 for the borrowing tax levy for 2006 under park improvements. Do we need to vote on the first motion first? Are you voting the first motion first? The main motion, there was a main motion made to, this is to amend, to amend it. The motion was to amend? Correct. To amend. Mm -hmm. Okay. There, there's a motion. Was there a second? I'm sorry. Second to amend? Yes. Under discussion? Alderman Groff? Thank you. Uh, on I, the I, amendment? On the amendment. I'm just wondering, um, I don't have my documents here. Is that 125000 all tax levy money or is that um, part? Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, how it's itemized, it's under the tax levying, it's borrowing strictly okay. for the parks, right? And just so the public is aware, we are still, for the year 2006, we're still adding $400,000 in improvements in our parks. So, but to be borrowing money, I think that's a little excessive, given our time frame. Thank you. And Your Honor, if I could just ask Rich um, or Tom, if, or Tom maybe Davis here. Tom is not here. Um, how much is the contribution that we're receiving on, on that particular project from like the federal government or don't we get anything on that? Is there a contribution? Mr. Bebo, is it considered department head? Yes. Deputy. For, for 2006, the, the plan for borrowing was a total of 525,000. Mm -hmm. 
which 400,000 was coming from federal sources, 125 was coming from the borrowing of tax levy. Okay. Now, do we lose any of the 400,000 because we're only we're not going to borrow that 125? Well, obviously, we, we, when you have a total project of 525 and you take out 125,000, it's going to affect the overall project. It may okay. affect possibly building one or two pieces because you because of that lack of funding. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Groff. Alderman Stefan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I just want to clarify, the motion was to take out the $125,000. Is your intent then to move, typically when we approve the capital improvements, we approve a set amount and, you know, we might, okay, we're taking that item out now. Are we moving something else up to spend $125,000 on? For example, the fire department I know has a boiler issue. Or is your plan just to reduce the capital improvements borrowing by the $125,000? Alderman Sardos. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm only speaking because he asked me a question. I'm only asking for a reduction, not to place it anywhere else. But if we'd like to get creative and later on when we're approaching the taser guns, we might want to think that there is some more. And this is actually borrowing, so that wouldn't, that wouldn't come into play. So no, I'm not placing it anywhere else. Alderman Ebert. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. I think I'd like to steal a page from Alderman Serta's playbook and ask uh, Mr. Beeble if postponing if, what the improvements are, if, if not expending the $125,000 this year would burden us for more cost in the future for uh, similar improvements. Uh, if you would have a comment on that, because I'm somewhat unfamiliar about what that $125,000 is specifically uh, intended for outside of some improvements in the park buildings. Mr. Beeble. Correct, Alderman Berg. It, thank you. You're right. It, it's, it's just pro prolonging, delaying maintenance. And, and what we're looking at is, is a systematic plan. And it's been in place year after year. We try to improve some of our restroom facilities throughout the parks. Um, I guess what I would ask the council to consider is that when we go through the process of capital improvements, we go through a commission. We submit our projects. They're reviewed. They're ranked on their own, own merits versus other projects. And I guess I understand the police station issue and the borrowing, um, but when, you, when we look at it as a whole, the Capital Improvements Commission rated the projects. projects excuse me. And I guess if we're looking to cut borrowing, maybe we should start at the very bottom of that ranking list, not just pick the parks. I would look at what was rated the lowest out of the entire Capital Improvements ranking. <coughs> Um, but I just look at it, we, we have a 525,000 uh, $525, total project for 06, of which is 125,000 being borrowed from the tax levy. 400,000 we're leveraging through federal funds, which could be jeopardized um, if not having the city share of that portion. Mr. Beeble, please stay there. You may have some more questions. Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If I could ask Mr. Beeble, how much money was spent in repairs of, um, um, in the barks concerning some of these um, restrooms and all that to the damage and graffiti and all that that was, has taken place? How much has the city spent in that alone? That's a, that's a tough figure, but on, on, a, on average, I would say anywhere from ten to $20,000 annually. Are, are related to vandalism and, and damage in our parks that we have to repair on an annual basis. That comes out of our operations account. Please stay there. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm going to vote against this. If this is getting to be ridiculous. We want to build a police station. We don't even have a plan in hand yet. They're still doing the studies on this thing. If we're going to push it to this point, then I'll make a motion when the budget comes up in the 28th to pull $125,000 out of the police overtime budget, which is a little fat to begin with, and put the money back in the swing. Says, we're going to play these games or we're going to let Sabinash do what he's supposed to do and design and build us a police station. That's his job. We're not here to tell him how to do his job. Nobody tells me how to do my job. I mean, I do my job the way I'm supposed to. I'm not an expert at construction, but I do take his word because he is. Thank you. Mr. Beeble, I'll be right with you, Alderman Susha. Mr. Beeble is right. The commission's Capital Improvement Commission has a rating system. It's been used for years. It's fair, and it applies 
fair rules to everybody. They all get rated. To have an alderman just pick out one that they don't like without giving the process the opportunity to work itself, in my mind, is incorrect. If that's going to happen, that's going to happen. But if there's a rank in order that if one is taken out, then the other one moves up. And what we're doing here is just simply ignoring all that work, all that time that was spent by the Public Capital Improvements Commission. And that's a shame. <coughs> Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just to put things in perspective in regards to what you were saying, um, park improvements ranked uh, 13th from the top, and a new police facility ranked 23rd. Um, things that ranked very high from capital improvements would be the street paving and resurfacing, new police video system uh, for all of the, the police cars. You know, those types of things ranked um, higher. And um, in regards to the park improvements, when we were in committee, I did vote against uh, spending this money because we were looking at a time frame from 2006 to 2010. And my concern was I felt like we did not have enough um, information from contractors that would build these buildings. And I felt the price tags on some of these bathroom uh, structures were a little bit high. Um, so I voted against it in committee more for the principle of the fact that we didn't have any informational estimates at hand. But when you look at the amount of money that is coming from the federal government, um, I don't think we can just give that money away to a different community. I mean, if they are willing to give us the money, then I think Sheboygan should take advantage of it. And when you look at the number of law-abiding, tax-paying citizens that would actually go to the park, I would have a feeling there are more people that would use the parks in the city than that would actually have to um, go through the process of being arrested um, in utilizing a new police station. I think it's time that we do something for the community, for the people that are paying taxes, something that they can enjoy in their own neighborhoods. When you look at the amount of tax dollars that have gone into the development of the self pier and gone into the marina, which a lot of local people don't use on a regular basis, I think it's time that we do something for the taxpayer and give them something that they're going to be using um, which is basically improving their neighborhood parks. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Weevil. <clears throat> we will call a roll on the amendment. Would you please read it? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Alderman Serta, but I believe the amendment is to suspend, I'm sorry, to um, not borrow the $125,000 tax levy for 2006 under park improvements. Is that correct? And I vote would be to not borrow. Everybody clear? First is Manny. No. Meyer. No. Montemayor. No. Radke. No. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. No. Susha. No. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. No. Bauman. No. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. No. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. No. And Kittleson. Five eyes, 11 no's. Motion fails. We have a motion on the floor then. Please read it, call uh, the roll. The general motion is by Alderman Graf and Montemayor to accept and adopt the reports of committee and pass the resolution. That was the original motion. Please call the roll. Okay. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. No. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. No. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. No. Eberg. Aye. Serta. No. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. And Manny. Aye. 11 ayes and, oh, I'm sorry. 12 ayes and four noes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 1589 lies over. 1590 to 1594 to be referred. Matters laid over, 9, 1428 RO, number 3440506 oh, by City Plan Commission recommended recognizing historic Michigan Avenue, Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move to accept and file the report of officer and pass the resolution. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If I could please ask Paulette Enders so that she could just clarify that Michigan Avenue is actually not a historical 
type of um, area, but that is uh, why they are um, so naming it the historical Michigan Avenue site. If Paula could just please explain to the people. Ms. Sanders. Okay. Thank you, Mayor and Common Council. And I think it's clearly stated in the resolution that this isn't an attempt to designate a historic district by ordinance where there would be um, certain what happens is if it's you know a true historic district by ordinance through the Historic Preservation Commission, when a, any type of building permit is pulled on the building, there's a level of review by the Historic Preservation Commission. This is really just a, a naming similar to um, Heritage Square, the riverfront, the lakefront, South Pier District, and it's for naming purposes only. Thank you. <coughs> we don't need a roll, you want a roll? Mm -hmm. Please call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. And Meyer. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1429 RO number 34505. 06 by the City Plan Commission recommending amending the zoning map to change the use district classification of the corner lot on North 37th Street and Erie Avenue from Class UR Urban Residential to Class SC Suburban Commercial. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. May I put um, agenda item 1430 or should we do them separately? Together would be fine. Together? Together? All right. I move to accept and file the report of officer and pass the ordinances. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion, there being none, please call the roll. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. And Montemayor. Aye. I'm sorry, 16 eyes. 16 eyes. Motion carries. 1431 has been acted on. 1450, resolution number 1510506 by Alderman Groff, Stefan, and Montemeyer authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 05 budget. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. <clears throat> motion and a second. I'm sorry, who seconded it? Second. Thank you. Alderman D. Berg. Thank you, Your Honor. What is this 2810? What sculpture are they going to? That's the sculpture down in the rotary. I thought that the, it wasn't going to cost the city any money. It isn't. This is a donation. We received the revenue for it and set okay. it up in the. I'll let, we'll let uh, Alderman Bowman explain there. Alderman Bowman. Right. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. The, uh, that definitely is uh, uh, donations that are being asked for by Dr. Groff and his group that have formed to. Um, uh, keep the sculpture here in the city of Sheboygan. And I'm honored to say that I'm also a person that did contribute to this, and part of my money is in this. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bowman. There's a resolution by Alderman Groff regarding Dr. Groff. Don't confuse that. <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay, 1540, 15, 1450, please call the roll. Sigali. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Montemayor, and Radke. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1480, resolution 1520506 by Alderman Berg, Graf, Berg, Serta, and Van Akron authorizing the Civil Service Commission to review and recommend the, to the Common Council the salary for elder persons for council year 20708 and thereafter. Alderman E. Berg. Yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. I move for passage. Second. The motion and a second. Under discussion. Under discussion, uh, this basically uh, puts the review of uh, salary for older persons uh, in the hands of the Civil Service Commission and keeps it at that particular level. That does a couple of things, and I thank Alderman Serta for the suggestion. This really establishes an arm's length relationship with an independent body that will take a look at comparables uh, of uh, aldermanic salaries and then uh, report that back to the council. 
the tough job is still ours. How much do we value ourselves? Are we going to uh, follow uh, their recommendation or not? But this basically establishes a procedure that now annualizes it because for several years we've waited with fits and starts with this matter. So I would encourage you to uh, vote for approval. Any further discussion? If not, please call the roll. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. and Sigali. 16 ayes. Okay. Fourteen eighty two resolution number one fifty three oh five oh six by Alderman Stefan encouraging the use of local labor to perform construction projects in Sheboygan. Alderman Stefan. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion. Uh, I think it's uh, pretty much self explanatory. It's just encouraging Walmart to be a good corporate citizen and use local labor wherever possible. Any further discussion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. 1483, General Ordinance Number 440506 by Alderman Vanderweel, Susha, Montemeyer, Ratke, and Meyer relating to stop signs so as to install four stop signs, two, two signs on Elm Street at the intersection of 20, South 25th Street and two signs on Elm Street at the intersection of South 26th Street for both eastbound and westbound traffic. Alderman Vanderweel. You were, I think, I believe you chaired that meeting. I'll make a motion to put the general ordinance upon its passage. Alderman take all four. Vanderweel, would you like to take all the rest of them from take, the committee? Take all four. There's four of them. Okay, with that motion, I'll take 1484 and 1485. And 86. And 1486. There's a motion, there was a second. That would be 1483, 84, 85, and 86. Under discussion, Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to make a comment on 14-83. Um, I'm sure the people on Elm Avenue on 25th and 26th Street are, are quite happy with their stop signs. I just feel that I need to mention that um, the people on 18th and, and uh, Mead fought so hard and so long and had petitions and the fire department was behind us to get a four-way stop on 18th and Mead. And at that time, when I went to the meeting of public protection and safety, um, Ryan Sasma, who is um, assistant engineer, had said that those were not, uh, a criteria <coughs> was not followed, could not be followed in the white book that he had pointed out and that we weren't able. So the people, as though they were disappointed, um, accepted that. Now, when I went to the meeting for the, um, the Elm Avenue on 25th and 26th Street, um, this, the gentleman made the comment, well, this doesn't follow the criteria in the white book, but we're going to do it anyway. So I, I mean, he set a precedence here, and I feel that the people on 18th and Mead deserve just as much as what the people here on 25th and 26th of Elm Avenue. And there were people at the meeting who also heard that comment, so I just want to have it said that the people on 18th and me did deserve that four-way stop sign just as much as what was here. I thank you for that. Nice thank you, Alderman Zagali. Okay, we'll call the roll. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Montemayor, aye. Radke, aye. Sigali, aye. and Stefan. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, 1595 will go to finance. 1596 will go to finance. 1597 will go to special committee on risk management. Am I going too fast? No, that's correct. Okay. 1598 will be referred to public works. 1599, a resolution by Alderman Bauman accepting the deed from Walmart Stores East LP for additional Green Wing and Pond property. Alderman Bauman. I thank you, Your Honor. I'd move that the resolution uh, accepting the deed from Walmart for the uh, Green Wing 
pond property be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. There being on, please call the roll. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. And Susha. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 15100 and an, an RO by the Board of Electrical Examiner submitting a license that had been issued. Alderman Davies. Honorable Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to uh, accept and file ROs 15 100 and 15 101. There's, there's a motion and a second. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 15 102 will go to public protection and safety. 15103, a resolution by Alderman E. Berg, Radke, Meyer, and Sigali establishing a Blue Harbor Resort Convention Center Committee for the City of Sheboygan. Alderman Berg. Well, thank you. I uh, move to pass the resolution. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. All kinds of lights going on. Alderman Graf. <laughs> thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I guess I have a general question after reading this over several times. I'm, I'm so, what is, what is the goal or the purpose of of this and, and what do you expect to, to gain from this? If somebody can answer that question for me. Yes, as it stands now, there's, there's no oversight committee reviewing any, anything that has to do with our convention center at, at, at Blue Harbor. And what this resolution proposes to do is to establish a committee and there's a nice mixture of uh, committee members that will, that will be appointed to that committee. Uh, they will be establishing the oversight standards and, 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 and in agreement with the agreement that's already been signed by, by Great Lakes and the city and strengthening that relationship, that partnership that we have with them. It's a tool by which we can just keep our eyes on what's going on with the activity at our, our, our convention center. I, Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Your Honor. I, um, the reason I am happy concerning this resolution is that um, um, I was quite involved um, tried to find out the goings on of our convention center and in the process of doing so I had found that at least seven conventions were denied access to the Blue Harbor Re Convention Center because of the fees of the rooms and they went elsewhere. And I feel that the city, since the convention center is, um, the taxpayers of Sheboygan had put so much money into this, they have the right to know what is going on with the convention center and just to oversee the goings on and to hopefully that the conventions that we lost in the past we can bring back because bottom line is that's what's known as tourism and when it comes to um, coming into this city they can go back and say hey you know there's Blue Harbor Convention Center that we all can you know go visit or have another convention there so I think this um, resolution to have a committee that oversees the goings on of the convention center is very important. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Alan As it stands now, a lot of the communication, this is a very very good managerial tool also for the council and for, for the mayor's office, but as it stands now, when we get our financials, they actually go to the city development. They never make it anywhere further. And so I think it's important that the council have some oversight over those financials and any, all the activity that occurs uh, with the uh, convention center. It, it's a useful tool. Alderman Stephan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm concerned about this on a couple of different levels. I guess, in respond you know, to the oversight, I think the two things we, we legitimately have a right to know are, you know, are they making their payments to pay off the convention center through room tax? <clears throat> we know they've done that for this year already. Even though it's only November, they've made their payments for this year as required. I think we have a right to know that some people have mentioned that the convention center is being properly advertised when they have conventions to all the different uh, hotels, motels, bed and breakfasts. I think we have a right to know that they're doing what they said they would do in the contract. And I guess I'm just not sure that this is the right step to take. Uh, if we want that oversight, I think we've got a finance committee that, you know, you can make the argument they should do it. You've got a tourism committee that certainly you can make the argument. Maybe you want more, you know, lodging people or citizens at large, they're on there. 
heck, we've got a strategic fiscal planning committee that's never met all year, and that's the mayor and the, and the chairs. And I understand that, you know, it, it, it's a decision that where I think it's more work's being done in the committees, and that's fine, but I guess even if this has to be done, which I think is borderline all this stuff, I don't want to get too involved in it because, like I said, if it has to be done, I think we have the committees in place to do it. It just needs to be said. We're going to make sure you're in charge of it, whichever the committee, the mayor decides or the council decides, I don't have a problem with that. I was at the meeting with, with all the person Sigali, and I share her concerns, but on the other hand, you know, we don't run a million dollar hotel, and we can't tell them what to do. We can only tell them what our contract allows us to tell them. We can make sure they go through the correct procedures, and we can make sure they give us the money. If they don't make the money, they give us the, from the guarantees. We can't tell them to have a $59 room rate, or a $69, $79, $89, whatever it is. We can't tell them that. We can't micromanage their business. And I think we legitimately have those two concerns. The room tax dollars that are coming into us, and those are good, so I don't know why we'd want to look at it. We do have some legitimate concerns, I think, about how they're marketing it, that I understand. But I just think we can, I don't see why we have to have a committee for that. One of the people on here, I can remember him saying three months ago, well, just so we need another stupid committee. We've got enough committees. That's how I feel about this one. If we do need to look at anything, I think we've got some committees that could do it. So I won't be supporting the creation of another one. Thank you, Alderman Stefan. Alderman Eberg. And so thank you, Your Honor. I think, uh, and this is sitting on my desk for about six months, and I think you and I have talked about the various mechanisms. And if there is a model, it's the Marina Commission. Uh, it's a very similar process in that the marina is owned by the municipality, yet managed by a private entity. The convention center is essentially in the process of being owned by the municipality and then managed by a private entity. What this does is uh, within the terms of the development agreement, if there was, I believe, a shortfall in the development agreement, it didn't unify the oversight responsibility in one specific location. This doesn't change the development agreement, but it starts a process of a dialogue where if changes can be made, at least we have the ability to communicate directly with our vendor, the managers of Blue Harbor. I think the development agreement speaks very clearly and, uh, and very narrowly in terms of the areas we have privilege to. When it does speak to the marketing plan, it does speak to ensuring that for any convention that Blue Harbor is required also to make available to any potential uh, booker of a convention, all the other uh, hospitality venues and inns and uh, hotels that are in the community. So uh, for me, for this purpose, I think we are well served to have a oversight commission because what it starts out to be this year will likely not, it will, not what it will end up to be because I can almost guarantee you that it's very likely with the changes in interest rate that Blue Harbor at some time will come back and be reinterested in reopening the development agreement and that's the opportunity then for us to <coughs> enter into a dialogue with them about any changes if you would in terms of the privilege of the committee in terms of oversight. Thank you, Alderman Berg. <coughs> Alderman Graff. Thank you, Anna. Um, this will all be all well and good, but just, just before when Alderman Zagali was speaking, she mentioned that they were denied access to the convention center. I don't believe, because I was at that same meeting, that they were denied access to the convention center. They chose not to have their convention there because of the room rates and the food costs. The convention center, they could have used if they so chose and stayed at another location, but they wanted to stay in the same place. But there are certain guidelines that Blue Harbor were, is given saying you can't have a room rate this low, or you can't have something this low. You can only go down this far with whatever you do. And there's also a rule that says if you're using the convention center, the food and beverages must be purchased from um, the Weisgerber group. So you have certain conditions that if you want to have a convention there, you have to use. And we can't do anything about those, but we have to be very careful how we interpret that and how we say that to the community out there. So um, I'm, not, I'm not really crazy about this committee either at this point in time, but um, that's all I've got to say. Thank you. Thank you, <clears throat> Alderman Graff. Alderman Susha. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I, I do agree with Alderman Graff that the city does not have the right to set the rates that the hotel is charging for their guest rooms. Um, and I also agree with uh, uh, Alderman Eldenberg that um, 
there is, is a big concern in the lodging community that it clearly states in the development agreement that the Blue Harbor Conference Center must make available to anyone booking a conference all of the lodging in the city. And a few months ago, Alderman Radke and I went and visited the hotel and toured the conference center. When we requested this information, um, I was handed a visitor's guide. And when I asked if I could have 15 copies for the other aldermen, I was told I had to go to the Chamber of Commerce. So they are not uh, readily making it available to the public. Um, the reason that we do need another committee to look at this, and I think all the aldermen will suddenly see the light, is because if you give this to a city committee that's already standing, um, I would expect everybody on that committee to sit down and read the development agreement again from front to back cover, which is over 100 pages. And then you need to go to the city attorney's office where all the supplemental documents are, which total approximately a couple hundred, hundred more pages of supplemental attachments and things. I mean, there is a lot of reading to be done here. And I think that this is probably a smart move <coughs> because even if uh, this calls for two aldermen um, to just dig in up to their elbows with what's in the development agreement, we need to keep people on this council that know what it says. We need to know what's in that development agreement to make sure <coughs> that everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, for example, you know, Alderman Stefan pointed out that, you know, well, Great Lakes has paid their room tax for the year. They're doing great. Well, their annual payment was due in October. So they better be paid up to date because now we're in November. And the majority of that money did come in three or four days before it was due. So I'm glad to say that they were able to pay that money. That's a step in the right direction. But we need some experts to really look at what that document says. It's been well, two years, I think, since it was signed off on. And many of us weren't even here. So we haven't read it um, thoroughly. So I think that we should really um, support this. And I also wanted to point out I think Alderman Sigali uh, mentioned that um, that property tax was our, the taxpayers paid for the conference center. And I just want to clarify that it was room tax paid 100% for the conference center in the parking lot, that the uh, property taxes that were used in the South Pier District went for other infrastructure projects. Property tax was not used at all for the um, building of the conference center. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Just as a final point, the oversight committee will be set in the standards by which to have that oversight authority. Um, I agree with all you aldermen who have said micromanagement is not our role. And I think every one of you knows how I feel about micromanagement. It's not our role, but that's part of the standards that can be established when that committee committee meets. Now committees, when we when we're in favor of support, when we support committees, <coughs> we speak well of them. When we don't, we speak ill of them. Folks, there's nothing wrong with committees. They help you do the legwork. They help you do your job very effectively and very efficiently. Sometimes we use committees like it's a bad word. It's not a bad word. Don't let it become a bad word. We need assistance a lot of times. Our standing committees have their hands full. You heard me tonight, 111 documents, a record that has been set by any council here. You have your hands full. There's a lot of things that are happening right now with Blue Harbor that we need communication, we need information. Same thing happened with the, with the chamber contract. Nobody knew who was supposed to have oversight. It went on and on and on. Nobody knew who was going to do what. That's why a committee was formed, so that we can have that oversight. This is why we need a committee here, and I support Al uh, Alderman Berg's uh, uh, resolution. So I would hope that you, Alderman would support it. Please call the roll if there's no more debate. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Gropp, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, no. Susha, Aye. and Van Akron. Aye. 15 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 15-104 will go to Public Works. 15105 will go to Room Tax Advisory Committee. Other matters? Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. 5-106 uh, uh, is a communication received by the mayor from Eugene Kleinke stating that uh, when he was at the residential drop-off site, he saw a man empty his full trailer into a waiting garbage truck and is concerned that city employees may be getting free drop-off privileges. And we'll go to Public Works. 5107 is a communication from Susan Hundley. Mead Public Library board member stating that she has had some pleasant and definitely unprofessional experiences with a couple of the board members. We'll go to Ethics Board and Library Board. 
5-108 is a communication from Sheila and Carla Matlin, guardians of the estate of Dina Matlin, respectfully requesting an extension of the date by when they must pay off the remaining 475000 due pursuant to the stipulation entered into between the city and the estate of Dina Matlin. That will be referred to risk management. 15109 is a communication received by the mayor from Jerry Isabel of Orange Cross Ambulance stating the new Medicare fee schedule and the new office location. And that will be referred to finance. 15110 is a proposal from Triad Engineering Incorporated to provide assistance for preparation and submittal of application for the, uh, to the US EPA for a Brownfields Revolving Loan Fund grant. That will be referred to finance. 15111 is a resolution uh, to grant the proper city officials uh, authority to execute agreement for third party PECFA claim reimbursement. And that would also go to finance. The mo motion is second to adjourn. All those in favor, state aye. 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 And adjourn.